Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to unbox, partially disassemble, explain how to upgrade, set up, and then provide a full review of the Dell Inspiron 16 Plus. Now, before you think, oh, that's a, sort of a standard laptop, there's no such thing as a standard Dell Inspiron 16 Plus. There are dozens of them. So you can see here, we have a few. And these laptops uh, are different versions. Some of these have touch screen, some of them don't, some of them have 32 gigs, some of them have i9 CPU, some of i7 CPUs, some of them have two speakers, some of them have four speakers. There's a lot of variation. So you have to be very careful when you're buying this that you get the product you actually want. Our review is on the P132F, AKA the 7640. That's the one with the touch screen, 32 meg of RAM, and a bunch of other really cool features. They all have a 16 inch screen. They all have uh, similar ports, although there are some differences. And some of them have a plastic chassis. Some of them have a metal chassis. I don't think most people care when they come in at this price. This is probably Dell's best laptop right now. And about the only thing we can find wrong with it is if you get an NVIDIA video card, which this one does not have, you will find that it gets very hot. People have called it a toaster. This one does not have the NVIDIA video card. We will not be gaming or performing advanced artificial intelligence tasks. It would be nice to have the additional GPU capacity. The current generation of Intel Arc XE video that is included with this is pretty impressive and will handle any task even high-end office workers are going to require. What it won't do is high-end gaming, but even normal range gaming is going to work just fine on this. There's no point in actually doing an unboxing because there's nothing in these anymore. Dell's done a great job of simplifying the packaging. Uh, there's a couple of useless manuals. There's your power brick. In our case, the power brick is a 100 watt power brick. If you have an NVIDIA video card in one of these units, it'll probably have a 130 watt power brick. The first thing we're going to do is disassemble it. Well, we're gonna pull the back off and then show you what's inside and how you can upgrade it over time. So let's do that right now. All right, so let's flip it over. And the first thing you're going to need to know is that uh, you're going to need specialized tools to get this uh, apart. This is a tiny little Phillips. Phillips is, is the star. We have specialized tools, lots of them, but none of them fit this head, which was weird because we've done a pile of these in the past. I eventually found a nice little one that uh, came with a phone repair kit. Pro tip, by the way, whenever you are taking screws out, make sure you lay them out in the order in which they came out in case they're not the same size. I can tell you in this case, they're all the same size. The only notable uh, thing here is that these two, as is often the case on Dells, are on washers, so they don't actually come out. And then if you don't have a specialized uh, opening tool, uh, what you can do, or pry tool, just uh, use a credit card or something and pry your way around. Find a spot that's up a bit like this one and just work it around. This is most definitely plastic. I put a little scratch in it already. Big 90 watt battery. Yes, excellent. We've got a 2280 SSD slot, M.2 PCIe. Some of these units have two M.2 slots, so you can add a second one in. This is Wi-Fi, but it's not just Wi-Fi 6, it's Wi-Fi 6E. And what that means is it can work on the six gigahertz band, which has an awful lot of traffic than the normal five gigahertz. If you don't follow it, don't worry about it. Basically, it's as good as you can get. Wi-Fi 6E is the top of the top right now. That's your CPU with the heat pipe out to a substantial fan that backs the heat out through the vents along the back. And I can see under here, the memory is actually soldered on the board. I'm surprised. I thought this had two slots for SO dims, but it does not. They have soldered it right on the board. So in this case, 32 gig is just as big as you're gonna get. So that means on this model, there's really only two things you can change. The battery, super easy. Disconnect it here, pull a few screws out, swap it out, and you can change the SSD, but that's it. If you ever have this apart in the future, blow that out, including just with your mouth, if you don't have compressed air, because it will be a little gummed up and you always wanna clean that fan out, always. All right, so let's go over the ports. There's nothing on the front, as you might expect. On the side, we have 
an SD card reader. If you watch other reviews, you'll see a lot of these Dell Inspiron 16 Pluses only have micro SD card readers. This is the larger one, which is nice has a typical headphone jack, also a nice thing to leave in. And then it has a super speed, so it's a USB type A 3.2 Gen 1 connector with power share. On the back, we just have the vents that we talked about. And over here is where it gets interesting. Here you have a barrel charge port, which does not ship with the unit. So that's probably never going to get used. Then there's an HDMI 1.4 port, which is odd because on the other versions of the Dell Inspiron 16 Plus, you can get a 2.1 connector. Supports a lot more video, but you don't have to worry about it because you could just use the Thunderbolt port. Then there's another USB type A. Then we get the joy. That is Thunderbolt 4. Yay, that's where everything connects to. If you watch other reviews, you'll see people complain that there's only one of these. Yeah, but often people connect a dock, and that's what we're going to do. Could Dell have included more? Sure, but that would probably be on the Latitude line, not on the home Inspiron line. The keyboard, there's um, a couple of things. When you watch other reviews, you'll see that there's a vent along the top here. Uh, this one has vents on the side. Why is that? This is an air intake. It's also where the speakers are. On the other reviews with NVIDIA cards, you'll see the uh, people complain that this gets very, very hot and they're talking about how much it flexes and so on and so forth. This does not flex. This is fine. Uh, the keyboard is a backlit keyboard, which it has to be if it's going to get that Intel Evo designation. It also has something very cool, which is this a TUV Rhineland certified low blue light hardware solution. That means that it has limited amounts of 415 to 460 nanometer blue light. Why do you care about that? Well, the research shows that that leads to eye strain, fatigue, and uh, can even uh, screw up your sleep patterns. This is what Dell refers to as Comfort Plus. And what does Evo mean in particular? Evo is not a product. Evo is what Intel calls an ingredient brand. It means it has exceptional responsiveness. In other words, a fast CPU. It also has instant wake. This machine should boot up from sleep in less than one second. The battery has to be about 10 hours in real world usage, not just in lab testing. It has to have fast charging. It also needs to have wi at least Wi-Fi 6. This is Wi-Fi 6E and Thunderbolt. So you can transfer data here at ridiculous speeds. To be Evo, it also has to have Windows Hello features, which means in this case, a fingerprint uh, scanner. One of the other ones that we have, or a few of the other ones we have, actually have the infrared cameras up here so that you can use Windows Hello for face recognition. But you can't do it on this one. You can see it just doesn't have it. It also has to have a quality webcam and the audio has to have noise suppression. Now, if you're looking closely at this, you'll notice that there's a new key here. Well, it's not really new anymore. It's been out for about uh, just over a year. That is the Microsoft Copilot key. And what that means is that this machine has to meet the Microsoft AI PC standard. It means that you have to have an NPU in here. What's an NPU? It's the Neural Processing Unit. So we're all familiar with the GPU. That's the Graphic Processing Unit. That's your video card. CPU is the heart of the machine. And this one has an exceptional i9-185H with 24 meg of cache, 16 cores, 22 threads. This thing is gonna haul. But it also has the NPU, at least one NPU from Intel, and that's built right into the Intel i9-185H CPU package. Now, as far as the screen goes, this screen uh, supports 100% RGB. What does that mean? That means it'll, it will reproduce all of the colors faithfully. Is it absolutely perfect for graphic designers? No. Is it more than enough for even most graphic designers? Yes. If you were working at Disney or in some high-end animation studio, they would say absolutely no way. They need something better. But being able to represent 100% RGB, awesome. And I believe this one also runs at 120 hertz. It simply means that it refreshes 120 times a second. So movies you see in the theater typically run around 24 frames a second. DVDs, 30 frames a second. The human eye can probably see it's debatable, but let's say 40 frames a second, 40 refreshes per second. That's why 60 is so good, but 120 is going to be just so smooth. One of the nice things about this is that it has this rocker on the back. So when you open and close the laptop, depending on the angle of the screen, it raises the keyboard up and gives you a happier angle to type at. Very nice. Okay, so let's power this up. Oh, another thing, this screen resolution is beautiful. 
It's 1920 pixels by 1200 pixels, also known as full HD plus, so FHD plus. If you're not familiar with those numbers, that's because they're a little higher than what you're normally used to. Most monitors are going to be 1920 by 1080, so 1080. This gives you an extra 120 pixels, which means things are just crisper. Very nice. And this one's a touch screen, so I'm just going to use the screen. Now the first thing you need to do with this is remove McAfee and any of the other junk that they've installed. They don't do that on the Latitudes, but they do do it on the retail product, which is the Inspirons. And that's because McAfee and a couple other companies pay to have their junk installed. So as you can see, this is the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. And you might think there's not a lot of difference between the uh, standard Intel Core Ultra 7 155H that's in most of these. Both of them have six performance cores eight efficiency cores, and two low power efficiency cores. So technically they both provide 22 threads. But take a look at the spec here. Ultra 7 155H, its performance cores run at 1.4 gigahertz. These run at 2.3. That's a lot faster. The efficiency cores in the Intel Ultra 9 185H run twice as fast. They run 1.8 gigahertz, whereas the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H runs at 900 megahertz. And even the low power cores have a big difference. The low power cores on the Ultra 7 155 are 700 megahertz, whereas they're a gigahertz on these Intel Core Ultra 9 185Hs. And there's eight XE cores on this for graphics for the GPU. And one of the nice things with this, no matter what version you get, is the memory. This is DDR5 5600. Now there are some versions of this that run slower memory, but this is running the 5600. Another must have for our application is that this is running Windows 11 Pro, not Windows 11 Home. With the Inspire Online, you can get a lot of Windows 11 Home. Now something worth discussing before we wrap this up is the quality of the materials. This unit here is a Dell Latitude 7650, which we have a full review on and we'll put in the top right hand corner. And you can see, this is all made of metal, just the chassis is made of metal. It's just a better construction. Now this Dell Precision laptop is also a heck of a lot more expensive than this Dell Inspiron. Let's address a couple of little things people were talking about I've seen in other reviews, because this model, as we've said, is a little different with the touch screen, 32 gig of RAM. When we've run our testing on it, this doesn't heat up anywhere near what the units with the NVIDIA GPUs do. It also doesn't seem to have the flex that some of the other units have. This is, it seems to be a stiffer chassis, but it does only have the two speakers. So overall, what do we think of this unit? We freaking love it. This might be Dell's best laptop today, 2025. It has all the right specs, and with the touchscreen, by the way, we should address the weight. The weight comes in at about four and a half pounds with the touchscreen, whereas the non-touchscreen comes in at, I think, 4.1 pounds. Do you really care? Probably not. This thing is the cheapest portable workstation you're going to get. It's more than a laptop. This came in at about $1,500 Canadian. So for rough math, let's call it 1100 and change US. Definitely worth that money for this spec. So what would we change? Just one thing, the plastic chassis we don't like, and that's because it scratches, leaves marks. We'd much prefer the metal. So hey, if you found this video useful, a big thumbs up, it'd be super appreciated. Subscribes, always appreciated as well. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtech, that's www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question or a comment below, and if we don't get back to you, somebody else will, because on YouTube, everybody's got an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.